genetic testing in cancers. I have broken down the topic into a few questions that I am frequently asked. I will be answering each one of them in order. The first question is what exactly is genetic testing? So it is a series of tests that we order for assessing the risk of an individual. So these tests identify changes in the DNA structure that are responsible for uh, predisposing of cancer. So what are the different types of genetic uh, testing that are available in the market? So these again depend on the type of cancer that we are testing for. Suppose for breast cancer and ovarian cancer, we have different types of tests available. The techniques that we use are NGS, which is called as a next generation sequencing. Another test is PCR, which is polymerase chain reaction. And the gold standard test is Sanger sequencing. So based on uh, uh, different types of uh, cancers that we are testing for, we use different techniques. So the commonly uh, tested cancers available within in the market that we frequently prescribe are breast cancer, ovarian cancer, pancreatic cancer, prostate cancer, and also colon cancer. How do these genetic tests work? So as I mentioned, the techniques that are available in the market for genetic testing are NGS, PCR, MLPA and Sanger sequencing. So these genetic tests, they uh, study the uh, DNA sequences and compare it with the normal DNA that we have in a library. And by comparing it with the normal DNA control, they identify any mutations or any uh, form of structural abnormalities in the DNA and then report it to us. And how accurate are these genetic testing? Of course, uh, none of these tests are foolproof. So there is some scope of error in these tests as well, but most of the tests that are commercially available in the market, they have a sensitivity and a specificity of about 95 to 98%. So there is still some chance of uh, these tests missing the mutations, especially NGS can miss large deletions. So that is the reason we do something called as a reflex testing. So once a test comes negative and we still have a high clinical suspicion of a genetic abnormality, we do a reflex testing by MLPA and then Sanger sequencing is the gold standard method that is even more uh, sensitive compared to the newer generation uh, techniques. But Sanger sequencing is a very uh, time taking and expensive process. That is the reason we are not usually uh, routinely using it in our clinical practice. Now for what cancers are these genetic testing available? As I mentioned earlier, the commonly available genetic tests in the market are for breast cancer, ovarian cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer and pancreatic cancer. Apart from these, a few other uncommon cancer uh, genetic tests are available but we are not routinely prescribing them. Now how expensive are these genetic tests? It depends on the number of genes that we are testing. So the smaller the number of genes, the less expensive it is and the larger the number of genes, the broader the panel, the more expensive the test becomes. So for smaller number of genes testing, it somewhere starts between 10 to 14,000 and then for a broader panel of uh, genetic testing, it can go up to even 35 to 40,000 as well based on the number of genes that we are testing and what cancer that we are testing it for. Uh, if I have a family history of cancers, any other form of cancer. So yes, genetic testing definitely helps when someone has a family history of cancers. Especially it is recommended for someone to undergo genetic testing when they have a family history of cancer because this genetic testing will tell us about the uh, risk of cancer in that particular individual. It also helps in formulating some preventive strategies if these tests come, turn out to be positive. So these preventive strategies can either be a rigorous screening techniques using any of the tests available or using some surgical or chemo preventive methods for uh, prevention of cancers in these patients if the gen genetic testing turns out to be positive. So to conclude, genetic testing is important for patients who have a family history of cancer. Not all patients require genetic testing and genetic testing is not available for all sorts of cancers. So thereby, when we are ordering genetic testing, we have to take multiple factors into consideration such as if the patient has a family history of cancer and what type of cancer we are looking for, what are the genes that we are testing, and what are the panel of tests that are to be ordered so that we can appropriately order the test for that particular individual to assess the genetic risk of cancer. Thank you so much.